All right, guys, I'm really excited for this. I've made a tool-changing bed probe, and it's, mechanically speaking, functioning perfect. There's still some work to be done, but let's back up and pick up this build right where we left off with the uh, styrofoam chamber, and I'll show you guys how I got the mechanics of this uh, pickup and drop-off mechanism functioning. Before I can make any other progress on this printer, I need to address the, um, the drive pulleys here. And the problem with them is that they were clearly designed for skinnier pulleys. If I pull this carriage all the way forward, we can see how it starts to cause the angle of the belt to change. That is, that's a problem. These are too big. And so I've got these new five millimeter rods with smaller pulleys ready to install. Using a rigid coupler like this one, I can easily join the, uh, the five millimeter rod to the five millimeter shaft coming out of the stepper motor there. But up here at the top, we're gonna have an issue because you see this um, bearing block is meant to receive an eight millimeter rod. Eight millimeter OD, five millimeter ID is surprisingly difficult to come by here in the United States. So I've ordered some extra couplers here and the outside dimension here is 8.75. I just need to stick this in my drill press and sand it down, you know, that 0.75 millimeters. So what is that gonna be like 0.37 or something like that millimeters on either side. Um, yeah, and then it will f slide up in there and the ID is correct. So that'll be my spacer and everything should work. You can see I've got the, uh, the smaller rods installed. There's the different pulleys there at the top and it mostly did its job. However, I don't know if you'll be able to see it at this angle. There is still a slight angle to the belt. It's not nearly as severe as before, but yeah, they really didn't uh, line up uh, the belts correctly in their CAD model when they were designing this printer. Hopefully the pro version of this printer has that thing fixed. I do think that I have a prototype unit here. Anyway, because I installed these smaller pulleys, that meant that the steps per millimeter was gonna change, so I ran a little calibration here. This was printed in the Z direction and that was in the X direction. And the whole point of this was just to get um, shrinkage values for the polycarbonate that I'm printing here. So I measured this and knew how much this was actually supposed to measure versus what it did measure, and I was able to give it a correction factor of half a percent. So I need to oversize my parts in actually X, Y, and Z for polycarbonate. Strange enough, 105%, uh, or I'm sorry, 100.5%. Now the neatest thing about this is I went to go break this and in all of my other prints, if I broke it like that, it would break right across the layer lines. But look at this, it took the diagonal path. This polycarbonate printing that I'm doing at 310 degrees is almost isotropic. Such a cool feature of this, you know, heated chamber polycarbonate printing. I am really excited about that. But this uh, isn't the only print that I've been doing. I've got all of these uh, prototypes, or I should say iterations, on um, parts for the printer. And this one here, this is the kicker. This is the big one. This one right here slides on to these two bosses. We'll talk about those in a second. And the switch is there and then that can slide off as well. So this arm will capture that piece here and pull it off. So hopefully I'll have the final version of this working here in a few minutes, but let's talk about this first um, idea, the, the first prototype. The, the arm actually started off looking like this, all angular and just overly complicated. You can always tell the, the, uh, the, the later versions of a design because they look more simple and that simplicity is deceptive. Mies van der Rohe, the famous designer said, less is more but it takes a lot of work to get to a simplified design. So if you ever see somebody's work in progress, if it looks really kind of overly complicated, that's an earlier version. Speaking of which, let's talk about this arm. I just showed you guys that it slides over the posts here, but this little part here was meant to stay um, under the posts, um, stuck there, and the arm would engage with it like so. And as you can see, the two wires would make contact with those two wires, thus completing the circuit. So whenever the probe was captured by the print head, the continuity of the wires from the switch all the way through to the control board would be guaranteed. But the problem with this design was it was meant to be captured by the, uh, the posts here, and that didn't work out at all. Speaking of the posts, let's talk about those. These started off life as this, a shoulder bolt from McMaster car. 
and the shank on these has an outer diameter of four millimeters, while the threaded portion is three millimeters, and I'm able to bottom it out and tighten them down nice and tight. So you can see I had to stick them in my drill press and um, just stick a file onto the head here to make the head portion as well uh, the same four millimeter uh, outer diameter. And as you can see, that's working nicely to capture the, um, the arm here. So these are my final components that I need to get uh, installed onto the printer. Hopefully they're final, I'm, I'm hoping they're gonna work. I still need to install the switch right there. And you can see on this previous iteration, the way that I uh, get the switch mounted is I just take my soldering iron and kind of melt the plastic between the switch and the polycarbonate arm. This is gonna be a new mount for the two fans. I'm having a problem back here where the fan protrudes past the back of the stepper motor and it collides. You see that it collides with the uh, lead screw for the Z axis. By far the most challenging uh, part of this installation is going to be lining up these two holes with the as yet to be drilled holes here in the frame. Yeah, you can see that the arm here is gonna get two screws that come down from the top and hold the arm in place, but locating that is going to be uh, kind of a trick. So let me show you guys how I did that. I've got some masking tape here with the sticky side up and you can see the two pieces holding it in place. So I basically attached this to the probe, slid it into place, and then pushed this up where it belongs, just like that. Peeled these sides off, and that is exactly where my holes needed to go. You can see I've got it installed. The arm is slightly different shaped. I had to add this like hammerhead section, and let me just show you guys the functional pickup. There's the uh, probe right there attached. There you go. Pick up and drop off like a Russian chauffeur. Pick up and drop off. So there you have it. The never before seen uh, tool changing bed probe that I promised you uh, as a surprise. So uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe somebody else did it beforehand, but I couldn't find any precedent on the, uh, on the internets, on the interwebs. Of course, not everything gets documented there in cyberspace. So chances are somebody else has already done something similar to this. But hey, it's working great mechanically, and next week we will get the firmware running with it, and I'll talk about exactly why I needed to do this solution, why it, why it was the, uh, the best option. So it has to do with being enclosed in a heated chamber, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I probably wouldn't have gone to all of this effort. Of course I would not have gone to all this effort if it wasn't in a heated chamber. I just would have used a BL Touch. So yeah, tune in next week for further discussions and adventures in the high temperature Core XY build here. See you then, thanks for watching, bye. Oh, I almost forgot. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. You guys keep me making videos. Uh, seriously, without you, I would have quit a long time ago. And for that, I am in your gratitude. See you next week.